It is that time again. It's time for our top five recipes for the first, no, the second quarter of this year. We make new videos just about weekly and we try a lot of new recipes. So I know that you guys wanna know which ones are our favorites. So we're about to tell you. Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. If you've been watching, it is probably no surprise that some of our favorites this quarter were all made in one week. You remember that? It was wow. a week of favorites. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Not all of them, but some of them. We are making Instant Pot Taco Tortellini Casserole. It's very easy. Bonus, you can even do this if your ground beef is frozen. You don't have to thaw it like I did. If you are really in a crunch, the recipe actually says use frozen. So there's that. The recipe doesn't call for it, but we love onion. So I'm going to cut a little bit of onion up. Not this entire thing, probably just about half and it looks like it has a bad spot on it anyway over here on this side, so I'll just use what I can. Okay, while I'm standing here crying because I don't ever take any of your advice or my own advice about cutting onions, I always just jump right in there and then regret it. So let's chop up this oregano while we're over here. That should be plenty of fresh oregano. Again, you can use dried. I just happen to have this in my little herb garden. Let's turn this on to saute. Now, if you're, um, ground beef is still frozen, you don't have to do this part. I'm going to cook it all on the saute function here, but you don't have to do that if you're just gonna use frozen. I have the recipe printed here, and as always, I will have it linked in the description box. While we are waiting on the Instant Pot to get hot, I'm gonna shred my cheeses. Now, the recipe calls for two cups of cheddar cheese. I'm gonna do a cup of cheddar cheese, but also a cup of Monterey Jack. Commentators in here saying, Looks like you got your work cut out for you. Might have to help you a little bit here, just cause I want to. Oh, you so sweet. Gracie Lou is out on the front or back porch, so she has no idea that cheese shredding is happening right now. Can you believe that? Okay, so our Instant Pot says it's hot. Let's add in our pound of ground beef. And I'm also gonna add in that onion that I diced. And I'm just gonna cook this until it's done. And then, We'll add in the rest. I'm gonna add in a couple of tablespoons of my homemade taco seasoning. Um, you can just use a pack from the store if that's what you have. And then I'm also gonna add in some minced garlic. You know what else we're gonna go ahead and add? We're gonna add our fresh oregano. So you can add your dried at this point if that's what you have. That'll season the beef as well. Okay, so our ground beef is done cooking. I'm gonna turn the Instant Pot off for now. And we're gonna add in a can of diced tomatoes. I'm using fire roasted. And then we're also gonna add in a cup of beef broth. Let me stir all of that together. And then at this point, we're also gonna add in one cup of the cheese. Not all of it, but some of it. I'm gonna try to add a little cheddar and a little Monterey. Let's stir all of that together. And I'm gonna grab my tortellini. So this recipe calls for 250 grams of tortellini. I'm gonna be real honest. No idea how much 250 grams of tortellini is, except on this bag, it has grams. Boop, boop. This is the family size and it's got 567. So we're gonna use about half of this bag. Go half it. Go half it. Now, we're gonna add the tortellini on top of the beef mixture. We are not going to stir it in. This is just a five cheese tortellini. We are just gonna make sure it's all in one layer, but we're not gonna stir it. I'm gonna add a couple more just for good measure. There we go. Let me take my Instant Pot clip off. This thing is so nice. And we're gonna pop the lid on. Let me make sure this is on there. Okay. I'm gonna set it to sealing and we're gonna pressure cook. It's set at one hour from the last time. I'm gonna bring it all the way down. You're not gonna believe me when I tell you what I'm doing. We're gonna pressure cook for zero minutes. Not kidding. So basically it's gonna come up to pressure and then be done. So it just came up to pressure and it immediately starts counting up at this point. We're gonna do a quick, quick release and I already have my oven set to broil and we are going to add all of our casserole here and top it with the rest of the cheese and just broil it for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna stir this around. Can you even see it? Not really. You'll see it in just a second. And we're going to transfer it over to this dish. 
Now there's a good bit of liquid in it just because we had that beef broth. So I'm kind of draining it a little bit as I go. I don't want it too liquidy. I am going to top it with just a little bit of salt and pepper. There is a good bit of salt in the taco seasoning, so I'm not going to add too much salt, but I do want some pepper. Now we're just going to top it with the remainder of the cheese. And this is going to go under the broiler for maybe three to five minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Obviously you don't want to burn it. I do this because I'm going to walk away and then I'll forget it and I'll burn it. Sure as the world, I'll do it. We let this rest for just a few minutes before digging in. Thank you so much for cooking this. You're welcome. It Thank looks, you for doing the yard work today. Looks like some comfort food yeah. after several hours of yard work. Yard work. Yeah. I'm happy about it. It looks delicious. It smells incredible too. Mmm. Oh man. Spicy meat. Not too much. Yeah. Got that good Tex-Mex Mexican flavor. Sure. You know. Yeah with the uh, fire roasted tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Then you got the tortellini. It's got that gooey little cheesy sure. middle in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really much of a sauce. No. It's a little saucy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, definitely get that oregano flavor in there. Do we? Yeah. That's Our really oregano good. from over there. Yeah. We're so excited. Ma'am, mm. you're being very loud. Yeah. You missed the cheese inside. I'm sorry, <laughs> you were out here napping. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, y'all, I'm digging in. I would not change a thing. This is so good. It's really good. It's, it's kind of unexpected because tortellini is usually an Italian, you know, Italian meal. So it's kind of unexpected to have the taco flavor, but it goes so well together. Mm -hmm. The creaminess of that cheese in the middle of the tortellini, man, that is, delicious. Mm. Y'all need to make this one it's so easy. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making boars and chicken. We're going to season our chicken. I've got two chicken breasts that I cut in half lengthwise. We're going to season them with a little bit of salt and pepper and some garlic powder. The same thing to the other side. Okay, let's take our chicken over to the stovetop. What is that? Go what's that? What's gourmet cheese? Is that anything like gourmet cheese? I don't know. What is, I what's mean, go what's gourmet? <laughs> Is it gourney or gourney? Honey, I don't know. I just call it boarzen. How do you say that? I don't know. I don't know. Boers and gourmet cheese. Do it to it. Yeah. So I've got this large skillet heated to about medium high heat. We're going to add in about a tablespoon of olive oil and about a tablespoon of butter and let that melt. Okay, to our hot skillet, we're going to add in our chicken and we are going to cook it all the way through. So it'll be five or six minutes on each side. Ooh, yeah, when that garlic hit that oil. Ooh. Oh yeah, you can smell it. Okay, so we just need half of this onion chopped and he has graciously said that he will chop it up for us. I'm going to cry. I'm going to let him cry I'm gonna today. I'm going to get the crying on. That's right. And then we've also got some parsley over here. We'll chop that up too. Chef Steven said he's going to go ahead and flip them. Yep. Yeah, I don't want my baby's hands to get burned here. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Oh, look at that color on there. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Our boars and cheese needs to be softened, so I'm just going to pop it in the microwave and soften it up really quickly. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the chicken out of here. This one's a little thick, so it's going to need a couple more minutes. What are we looking at? Ooh. Oh, it's, all, it's pretty much there. Hey, I think we're done. Carry over here too, so it'll be all right. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our half a chopped onion, and I might need to add just a little more olive oil in there. And that stuff on the bottom, it's got a lot of flavor, so just kind of scrape the bottom. We're just gonna saute these for like three or four minutes just till they're softened and they are gonna get a little brown. Okay, our onions are done. We're gonna add in about three fourths a cup of chicken broth. And then we're also gonna add in our softened cheese. And we're gonna stir this around until it's smooth. Once this kind of cooks together, it is gonna thicken up some. So let's just get this going. It'll just take a minute. <laughs> Could make them sick. Okay, it's smooth and now it's starting to simmer. We're gonna let this simmer for about five minutes. It'll help it thicken up. So this is gonna hang out and we'll be right back. 
I'm gonna tell y'all what, that stuff smells amazing. Don't sleep on the parsley. That's now. right, if, you, if you're not using parsley, that's fine, you don't have to, but we're gonna add in our parsley at this point as well and let that flavor kind of soak in there too. It is thickened up a little bit and it is ready for us to add our chicken back in there. Get it coated in that sauce. We're just gonna let this hang here for just a minute. We've got some broccoli in the microwave steaming and then it's gonna be time to eat. What you think? I think this looks amazing. That is delicious. Creamy, very creamy. Lots of flavor. Definitely the herbs in there. Yeah. The parsley kind of balances it out a little bit, you know? Right. Kind of lightens it up. Very nice flavors, yeah. All right, I'm gonna dig in. I need to hmm. give this a try and I'll be right back. Y'all, I was over here chowing down and almost forgot to tell you what I was what I thought. That borzen cheese sauce on top makes this so delicious. <laughs> Blush. Dang. <laughs> I was trying to rush through that too because I felt it coming, you know? <laughs> Something just got up my nose. I kind of want to make that cheese sauce and try it on different things too. You never know. You never know. I think yeah. it would be good on pork. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We could do a pork chop. I think so. I think we haven't done pork chops good. in a while. I know. About time for a pork chop. I was going to do pork chops in the air fryer the other day and I didn't have time to do it. We need to try that. We do. Yeah, that would be good. But this is very simple and very tasty. Okay, so if you are new here, what we'd like to do is read your comments on screen. So leave some great comments. You can leave tips. We love seeing tips that we can share with everyone. I found three comments. He hasn't heard them yet. He is what we refer to as... The commentator. The commentator. So he's going to read them. I'm going to pull them up here on my phone. I see Cheryl. Just say Cheryl. 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 <laughs> Cheryl says, Mandy, take a Sharpie marker and make a mark on your Instant Pot directly below that little triangle on the lid. Hard to explain, but I had a hard time with my lid also till my husband helped me with this. Okay, so what she's talking about is in this particular video, I was struggling getting the Instant Pot lid on. If you've ever been there, leave me a comment below. <laughs> Sometimes I try to put that thing on and it, and it beeps at you the whole time. It sings a little song. Yeah. <laughs> it's highly annoying and I can't get it to go right. So what she's telling me is that I should take a Sharpie marker and make a mark right. so that I know exactly where to put it. That smart. is genius. I need yes. to figure out exactly what you're talking about. I'm gonna go in there and mess with that and make that little mark on there so I'm not constantly right. messing with that lid. Very because good idea. It gets annoying really quickly. Like so that. thank you, Cheryl. And thank you to your husband because I think, yeah, she said my husband helped me with this. So yeah. thank you both. We are making pesto turkey meatballs. I'm also gonna serve it with, I mean, you could serve it, you know, just over any pasta that you wanted to. But if you go back in time, several years ago, I made a creamy garlic Parmesan orzo. That is still one of my favorite things. So I'm gonna make that tonight. I'm not gonna show you all the steps of making that. I'll link that video below so you can go check it out. But that stuff is so good. And it's gonna be really good paired with this pesto turkey meatballs. First, we're gonna come over here and preheat the oven to 400. You could probably do these in the air fryer as well. I've got one pound of ground turkey. The recipe calls for a pound and a half. I didn't wanna thaw out two pounds because that's the measurements that I had. So we're just going with a pound. I need one egg. I need about a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add. That's gonna help. First of all, it's got the lid on. Second of all, this is a grinder, not a shaker. Wow. We're gonna add about a half a teaspoon of black pepper about a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a half a teaspoon of dried basil. We're gonna use our hands. I took off my rings to, uh, I really hate this, but we're gonna do it. It's gonna be okay. Oh God, no, it's the egg though. The egg is what got me, but now we're good. Oh my gosh, this is so cold. I mean, obviously if I needed another half a pound, they would be a little bit drier. So they're a little wet. I'm a little worried about that, but ooh, let's add a little bit of breadcrumbs in to help that. Hang on, I'll be right back. You gotta do what you gotta do. I've got some Italian style breadcrumbs. I'm just gonna add a little bit in, not a lot. I'm not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna eyeball it. But I think that'll help some. I need to do some more with my clean hand. Oh, not the frozen turkey hand. Oh my goodness. Okay, I feel like that's a little better. We've got this dish here. We're gonna add our pesto to it. We're gonna add a fourth of a cup to the bottom, shake it up a little bit. The lid was not on all the way, so that was great. And let's just spread that around. We're gonna form as many meatballs as we can. The recipe originally says 16 meatballs, but that's with a pound and a half, so. Now we're gonna take the remaining pesto here 
and pour it all over. We're gonna make sure each meatball gets covered. I ended up getting nine. My last one was very large. <laughs> Gotta wash my hands again, I got pesto all over it. Okay, this is going in the oven at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. Then we will take it out and put some mozzarella cheese over top. Now it's time for me to get started on the orzo. This is all the ingredients that I need here, but, or most of the ingredients, I'll link the video below. These just came out of the oven. We're gonna top them with some mozzarella cheese. I think the recipe says like two thirds a cup of mozzarella cheese. I'm just gonna use the rest of this bag. This is going back in the oven for another five minutes or so just to melt the cheese. I did check the temperature of these. You wanna make sure it's cooked to 165 degrees. These are good. We're gonna let them cool for just a couple of minutes before we dig in. Y'all hear that beeping? That's probably the Amazon truck leaving our house. It's the box truck. <laughs> Brings we're, another box. We're box collectors around here, aren't we? That's right. What well, do you this think? Looks, this looks delicious. I'm telling you what. Mm -mm. Get some of that orzo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, I love it. Did you have your doubts when I said turkey meatballs? I was like, you know, turkey's a little sus. He's not the biggest fan of turkey. I mean, you've got to get on the ingredients. You have to get on it, and then you really have to be careful about mm. the temperature it cooks to. We've been, we've had a salmonella from undercooked turkey before. Wow. But the creaminess of the orzo? Yeah. All the flavors in the orzo, and then the meatball. With the pesto. Wow, yeah. Pesto. Man. I'm so glad you like it. Love the texture. It. It's good. Mm -hmm. Stop juicy it. juicy yep not dry <laughs> excellent mm. y'all y'all should have seen his face earlier when i told him what we were having it was like the look of just not disappointment but kind of skepticism like <laughs> eh. what do you say now great job <laughs> the texture of the meatball number one i'm very impressed mm -hmm. and then the pesto just makes it pop and then that garlic Parmesan oh, orzo. I mean, this is perfection. You could serve this with any pasta, but I highly recommend making yeah. this orzo. It's flexible. It is flexible. You're a flexible pasta. <laughs> All right, guys. This will probably be in an upcoming favorites. Y'all have got to make this. There was a reason I was so excited. It did not disappoint. What we got here? Let's see. Jessica says, I don't know why some people think meals from a crock pot are less better than any other way. I love mine. Never had a boring meal from it. The, the food cooks nice and slow. It's a huge help in daily life. Thanks for your wonderful videos. I love them so much. Well, thank you for watching, Jessica. Yeah. So I wanted to say, so Steven's never been a big crock pot meal fan until recently. I, we've had a lot better meals out of the crock pot, I would yeah. say. I've branched oh, out. Yeah. The reason why he was never a big fan is because, let's rewind 15 years ago <laughs> when I did not cook. I was, the only cooking I did was crock pot. And pretty much every single one tasted the same because they all had a cream of something soup. Yeah. So he said they all tasted the same. He was not wrong. So he uh -huh. had a kind of an aversion to crock pots because yeah. everything that I made out of them out, you know? tasted the same. And that was just on me because I didn't know how to cook. We don't have that problem now. <laughs> no, we don't have that problem now. I agree with you. It, they, they come in handy, especially oh, yeah. on these hot summer days. We're filming this today. Yesterday was the hottest day of the year. It's in the 90s with a heat index of about 100. And the hum mm. humidity is like 500%. So it's just a little unbearable. It's one of them stanking heats. <laughs> so hot you walk outside and immediately it feels like you just stepped out of the shower right. it's just not it's not pleasant at all um so heating up the kitchen on days like this is just not the best so crock pots come in handy it is time to make dinner tonight i'm using a new mexican rice recipe but as far as the meat goes i'm going to be making a queso chicken i don't really have a recipe for this we're just gonna wing it <laughs> chicken wing it okay so to get started, I'm going to marinate some chicken in some marinade. <laughs> I've never tried this kind before. I didn't realize it was salt free until I just now looked at it, but it's the dash lime and garlic marinade. I've got a chicken breast, a very thick chicken breast that I've cut in half. It's just me and Steven here tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that and just let that marinate in the fridge for 30 minutes. I went to go pop this in the fridge and I just realized I didn't do what I always do, which is I kind of stab it a little bit just to let the marinade really get into it. I didn't use the whole bottle of marinade because it was just two pieces of chicken. I didn't need it. That marinade smells really good. So 
let's pop the lid on and I'll see y'all back in a little bit. Okay, it's been about an hour since I put that in the fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the Mexican rice because the way I'm gonna serve this is we're gonna do like a bed of rice, do the chicken over top, and then the queso over top of that. So I wanna get started on the rice and then I'm gonna cook the chicken in the air fryer. It'll be great grilled, but just to cut time today, I'm gonna use my air fryer. So let's get started. I have to tell you one of the reasons why I chose a different recipe for Mexican rice this time was because I finally have this on hand. I used it in a, I believe in a subby supper uh, last week. And I know that several people said that they use this in their Mexican rice. So I found a recipe that uses that. To get started, let's add just a couple of tablespoons of this vegetable oil to this pot. I am heating it to about medium high right now. Let's add in one cup of white rice. And we're just gonna cook this for several minutes until it turns kind of a golden color if possible. I haven't always been able to achieve that, but I'm gonna stir it pretty much constantly and just let this toast up just a little bit before we do the rest. So my rice got a little bit toasty, got some color on it, which is exactly what I want. I've turned my heat down to about medium low. I've got two cups of warm water. We're gonna pour this in. And then the recipe says to add four to eight ounces of tomato sauce. So I'm gonna use about half of it now. If we decide we want a little bit more, I'll add more. Apparently the recipe, the author said that some people said it was too saucy with eight ounces. So I wanna go less, we can always add more. We're gonna add in two teaspoons of this tomato bouillon, a teaspoon of chili powder, and a couple of teaspoons of minced garlic. We're gonna bring this up to a bowl. So let me turn it back up. You just wanted to turn it down when you're adding in that water so it doesn't splatter too bad. Now that it's come back up to a bowl, I'm gonna stir it one good time. I'm gonna cover it. And I'm gonna reduce the heat to about, almost all the way to low. And we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. Okay, let's preheat our air fryer. So I'm just gonna hit the preheat button and let it do its thing. Okay, this is nice and hot. I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of oil I love this oil mister, it is so nice. And let's just drop our chicken right down in there. Just a little bit more of that marinade on there because why not? Let's do 380, 12 minutes and we'll check it at that point. And just so you know, I have this little cheat sheet on the side of my refrigerator. I've got this linked in my Amazon store, but I came over here to chicken, chicken boneless breasts, 380, 12 minutes. So that's kind of how I get my inspiration on how much time and what temperature to cook everything in the air fryer. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking this white cheese dip that I got from the grocery store and we're going to heat it, microwave it, just to get it to where it'll pour well over the chicken. Originally I was gonna mix some Rotel or some green chilies with it, but we decided to chop up some fresh jalapeno that we're gonna put over top too. So this is gonna go in the microwave for like 30 seconds. Our timer just went off for the rice. Um, that's perfection. I'm gonna remove it from the heat. Let me turn this off and let's just move it over here. I'm gonna fluff this up and we'll just let this sit for just a couple of minutes while we go check on our chicken. You always wanna check the temperature and make sure you're good. Yeah, we're, we're perfect over here. That looks and smells amazing. Wow, wow. <laughs> Gracie's like, wow. I'm telling you, this is amazing. I'm so glad. That sauce, that marinade that's on there. Yeah, is it really kind of, good? Yes, it's like this citrusy, it's a little, yeah, yeah. little like tangy, mm -hmm. tart sort of flavor. And then that cheese with the rice, that's crazy good. This might be one of the top. That's two, two nights in a row. I'm telling you, this is really good. I mean, this is very, I love how simple it is, but. And the, and the flavors are perfect. Yeah, they Like are. the flavors go really well with this kind of dish, with the Mexican rice. Yeah. I mean, that marinated chicken has that lime flavor and the yeah. lime flavor with the. Cheese and the. With the, yeah, with that Mexican rice and mm -hmm. the cheese on top. It's jalapeno. I mean, man, that is. The jalapeno is what set good. it off for me. I love that crunch of the fresh jalapeno with the spice of it. It would be a go backer if there was more chicken in there. He, he said just a second ago, he was like, there's no more chicken. <laughs> But there's cheese and rice. <laughs> I love this one. <laughs> I don't know what it says. Here we go. This says, these top five videos make something glaringly obvious. Steven has an infinite number of South Carolina loco teas. 
<laughs> it sure does. You are not wrong, Liz. Uh, new to your channel, but loving these videos, recipes, and your fluff ball cheese loving cat. <laughs> I loved this comment love so much. I do. He does. And it's because I shop at Sam's Club. And they always have, I think it's the brand State of Mind. And we live in South Carolina. And they always have the logo tees. But they're very, very soft. He loves the material of them. Right. So anytime they have a new one, I buy him one. <laughs> and he never gets rid of his old ones. So he has no. about... 40, 11. I don't get rid of anything until she gets rid. Of me. Right, right. He he will wear he will wear stuff. I wear it out. Ever. I wear it. It will out. have holes in it. Now, just to be clear, I, we don't mean South Carolina Gamecocks. We just mean the state of South Carolina. I just needed to be clear because we're Clemson Tigers over here, and I just didn't want anybody to get that idea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean, not really. Last night when we made queso chicken and I made the Mexican rice, I knew I would have a lot left over. So I wanted to plan another meal that we could use this in. This is a slow cooker Mexican street corn chowder. That sounds so good. And if you have fresh corn, it's gonna be even better. I'm gonna be using frozen corn today because the corn at my grocery store doesn't quite look great yet. So if you want to store this one for a little bit later in the summer when corn is plentiful and you can use fresh corn right off of the ear, even better. We're going to puree a chipotle and adobo. I just have one pepper, maybe a third of the corn that I have here, maybe not even that much. And we're going to add in about three fourths a cup or so of chicken broth. Let's put the lid on. Lock it in place. Let me plug it up. You know what? That's, yeah. My corn is still a little on the frozen side. That. But it's okay, it worked. I worried about that for a second. All right, we just have a little bit of chopping to do. It says to use a small yellow onion. I've got this half of an onion here and I may not even use the entire thing just because we are halving the recipe. So I'm gonna chop this. It says chop, not dice. And then it says to use a small red pepper, chopped. The recipe calls for a teaspoon of dried oregano. I have fresh growing in my little herb garden outside. So I'm just gonna chop up just a little bit of this fresh oregano that I just pulled. If I was using dried, I would use about a half a teaspoon for the amount that I'm doing. And then lastly, we need one russet potato. I'm gonna peel this and chop it. Okay, I'm going with my larger crock pot. Obviously I don't need it, but I only have two crock pots and the other one's being used. So I put this liner in there. Let's add all of our ingredients. So we're gonna add the remaining corn in here. I had about two cups of corn. So this is really only gonna make enough for me and Steven tonight, which is fine. We're the only ones that are gonna be here. I've got onion and bell pepper going in. My potatoes. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of garlic. Gonna use about one teaspoon of this ancho chili powder. It smells so good. About a teaspoon of cumin. You would also throw in your dried oregano. I'm gonna throw in my fresh oregano. And then this just says to taste, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of salt. And then the rest of our chicken broth is gonna go in. And now our pureed corn and chipotle pepper mixture. The original recipe, which is double this, says it makes 10 servings. I don't know how in the world you get 10 servings out of all this. We are gonna add more stuff to it later, but I mean, I don't even see how you would get five servings out of this half of the amount, but whatever. Okay, this is gonna go on low for eight hours since we're gonna have this for dinner. If you wanted to, you could do it on high for four. I'll see y'all back here a little bit later. It has been a day. But the good news is it is dinner time and I don't have to cook. I am going to add a couple of things into the Mexican corn, street corn chowder now and let it cook for another 30 minutes or so and then we'll eat. It's 5.30 now. First of all, we're going to add in some heavy cream. We need, since I'm halving this, we're just going to do a half a cup. Heavy cream is so expensive. I feel like it keeps getting more and more expensive. I don't know. I saw a big thing of heavy cream and it was almost $8. What in the world? Half a cup of this. And now we need a tablespoon and a half of flour. And this is just all purpose flour. Let's whisk that together. Now we're gonna pour this into the slow cooker. Let me move this over. Hopefully this is not gonna fog y'all up. Oh man, that smells so good. Okay, let's pour this in. I'm just gonna stir it in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank this to high just to help it do its thing. I guess this is just to help it thicken. And I've got three pieces of bacon. I cooked my bacon earlier. I cooked up 
the rest of the bacon that we had on hand. And it just says to crumble the bacon. So I'm just gonna tear it up and add this in. Oh, my fingers are greasy. Ugh. The recipe says you could use feta cheese or katia cheese. I did not find any katia, am I saying that right? Cheese at my grocery store. So we're gonna have to go with feta. And we just need about a half a cup of this, but I'm gonna crumble up the bigger pieces. And we're just going to stir that in as well. Okay, we're gonna let this hang out for another 30 minutes. And then it will be time to, I was gonna say plate it up, but I guess bowl it up. <laughs> It'll be time to eat. So I'm getting some toppings ready. We'll have some sour cream too, but I had some green onion. Thought that would be good. Have some lime. And then these came from our garden. There are so many out there. So many out there, but I thought this would be good too. Some sliced jalapeno on top. So this is the first time we've picked any jalapeno though. I'm pretty proud. Don't they look beautiful? Let's serve dinner. Got cream cheese in it, $100. No, it doesn't. Oh. You owe me $100. <laughs> Jack Leg, what'd you tell me it looked like? It looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. Okay, well this is not gobbledygook. I mean, that's what it looks like. Do you want me to tell you what it's called? I don't know. Let me taste it first. Okay. I won't be surprised. Okay. Man, that is really good. Is it? Yeah. What, is this bean? What is this? It is Mexican street corn chowder. Wow, that's amazing. I'm so glad Ooh. you love it. Pop the lime there, yeah. spiciness of the jalapeno. Yeah. Crunch of the corn, the sweetness mm -hmm. of the corn in there. But what's this? Is there cheese in there? What kind of cheese is this? Um, it's feta, feta cheese, yeah. This is insanely good. Is this a favorite? I'm gonna tell you right now, this is gonna be way on up there. Okay. I mean, this is like probably an all time fave. I love the spiciness of it. Right. I love all of the Tex-Mex spices that are in there. Yeah. The chipotle, the chili. Yeah. And they can tone it down. They don't have to put no, fresh they, jalapeno yeah, they can on tone there. It down. He he hiccuped from the jalapeno. Yeah, it I got, got him. a little something. <laughs> he said that's spicy. It is fabulous. That is oh the my perfect word. name for that. Mexican street corn chowder? Yes. It really is. If you wanted it to be vegetarian, you totally could you could do vegetable broth instead of the chicken broth. And then you didn't. You don't have to do the bacon, but Man. you know, you know we love the bacon. Yeah, don't skimp on the bacon. Come on now. <laughs> Is this a go back or? <laughs> you about to go back, yeah, ain't you? I might have to. A mm, couple times, maybe. Maybe just one. <laughs> All right, y'all. You got to make this one. 